Last week I told a story about a massive and evil German shepherd attacking my father and my brother. But telling that story reminded me of another time when Ryan and I were little kids and we were attacked by a feisty little chihuahua named Senko. This week on Sackville Sunday Stories. So crank it up. House parties, massive paper cut from here to here. There was a guy walking a ferret on a leash on Cobblehood Road. Sometimes those tiny dogs are the ones that have the most aggression. And they're vicious, and they snarl, and they snap, and they bite. Now, as an adult, you just kind of play it off. You're like, yeah, whatever, whatever, little dog. What are you going to do to me? See, the thing about little dogs is they have to have this overinflated sense of bravado because when it gets down to it, they're not really going to win fights. They have to master the art of intimidation. And as a little kid, you don't understand that completely. My grandmother had a little mouthy chihuahua, and his name was Senko. Now, Senko, or Psycho, had a hate on for anybody who didn't live in the house. He was very protective. He was very territorial. And anytime Ryan and I went over to visit, he was always snarling and snapping and running and charging at us. And little kids, you just go, ah, ah, ah. On his best day, after a heavy meal, Cinco was still the size of a pair of rolled up tube socks. Small, small dog, but that did not change the way that we felt. We were terrified of this dog. We visited my grandmother one day and after a couple of candies and popsicles and no sign of Cinco, we finally nervously looked around and said, hey, where's Cinco? My grandmother said, oh, he's asleep in his bed. And that's when Ryan and I hatched a plan of revenge. Now, two things. Number one, Cinco slept in a cage. So we figured, hey, we can go in there and scare him, but he can't scare us because he's locked away behind bars. And number two, kids are stupid. We had no cognitive capability to break down in our minds that this is a dog, right? Just doing what a dog does, protecting his home by trying to bite and snarl at us all the time. But we looked at him more like a kid that stole our Lick and Made Fun dip or made fun of us at the park. It was time for revenge, and we started sneaking down the corridor to Cinco's resting place. Ryan and I slowly and meticulously creeped down the hallway, trying not to make any noise. We got to the bedroom door, which was open, and just stood outside the door frame and listened in for a moment. Nothing. I looked at Ryan and said, Time to scare Cinco. Ryan looked at me and said, huh, More like Stinko. And the two of us giggled for about a full minute, covering our mouths just because we didn't want to tip Cinco off on our arrival. We slipped into the bedroom. It was game time. Inside the bedroom, of course, was a bed. On the floor on the other side of the bed, that's where Cinco's cage was kept. Ryan and I slowly walked around the perimeter of the bed. We saw the cage on the other side, but it had a blanket draped over it. Ryan and I slowly went over to the blanket, peeled it back and took a look inside. The cage, it was empty. The realization that Cinco was not in his cage, a wave of fear washed over my brother and I. Panic was about to set in. It was like that scene in Silence of the Lambs where Jodie Foster was over at Jamie Gum's house and it was pitch black and he was falling around with those night vision goggles. It was that level of fear. There was a psychotic killer in the room and he was not locked up. Ryan and I decided that we were going to get out of there post haste, but we were interrupted, interrupted by a snarling chihuahua who had been asleep on the bed the whole time. He was bounding across the duvet. We interrupt Sackville Sunday Stories for a special report. Hello. My apologies for the interruption, but new information has come to light. You see, several weeks ago I had told a Sackville Sunday story about a family trip that we took to Prince Edward Island, specifically to Rainbow Valley. On the way to Rainbow Valley while in the car, my mom realized that she had forgotten to pack our bathing suits and an emergency stop was made at the mall. We waited in the car, mom ran inside and came out, and with a look of glee, 
showed us the two rainbow speedos that she chose for us. Her reasoning, it would look great in the photos. Rainbow Valley, rainbow speedos, what's the problem? Ryan and I reluctantly put those speedos on. All of those photographs were destroyed. However, when editing this story about Cinco, one picture was found. It's not the best quality, but take a look. Here you can see Rainbow Valley, where in the Anne of Green Gables miniature village, there's my mother sitting on the ground, and off in the shadows, you can see my brother and I standing there next to the Anne of Green Gables miniature house. Now, I did pull the brightness, so let's just zoom in. There you can see two young boys wearing their rainbow speedos, and, and it appears that we're wearing plastic sneakers with Velcro attachments. So, this, the, the plastic sneakers with the Velcro attachments, I had actually repressed that particular memory, but here we are, photographic evidence, the last known photograph of Ryan and I in our rainbow speedos. I apologize to my brother if he finds this incredibly embarrassing. However, as a journalist, I needed to bring this information forward to follow up on the story. This has been Sackville Sunday Stories and our first emergency update. My name is Chad, and I will see you next week. Sackville.live is brought to you in part by the Doctor's Formula, plant-based supplements for professional athletes. And our friends at Quick Save Fuels on Cobequid Road, go to quicksavefuels.com to save.